prevent fraud and to protect the small investor. And I'm sorry, but the Republicans appointed Christopher Cox, and he did nothing. He looked the other way, and he was never, ever questioned by Congress after the collapse. Do you know that? Yeah, actually, I do. And, and what's also more disgusting is uh, the Justice Department never went after J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, that's right. They had a, that's fact, right. You, uh, name a few. Name a few other names of the very big, big, big shots who were deeply involved in this, who got away scot free, who are riding around in their private jets today, who would never ever call before Congress. We can name several of them. In fact, one of them uh, was a Treasury Secretary. Am I right? Yes, actually. But uh, what I want to bring up about J.P. Morgan Chase is he had all of his money there uh, for the hedge fund in an account, and when the hedge fund started getting low, when he had to start paying out, J.P. Morgan Chase had a view into this, and they said, uh-oh. So they pulled out their bank's money out of the hedge fund, and he paid them, but they left their client's money in his oh. hedge fund. Well, he was rewarded very well. He's a close confidant to President Obama, Mr. Jamie D. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's and, and he's one of the greatest donors to the Democrat campaigns of the Democrats. Is it any wonder, then, that they give so much money to the candidates? Is it any wonder that Hillary Clinton took $675,000 for, for three speeches from an investment bank uh, when they were up to their eyeballs in this whole scandal? Realistically, the six hundred seventy-five grand is really nothing to uh, Goldman Sachs for the access they're getting. It's a drop in the bucket. I mean, the politicians are so cheap. <laughs> well, I won't comment on that. I've said it many times. They are very, very cheap. They can buy them for pennies on the dollar in terms of what people get back. No question about that. 855 There's a couple other crazy stories out there that are being tweeted all over the map. One has nothing to do with this. Playboy model Katie Mae dead at 34. Of course, it caught my eye. She's very sexually beautiful. Uh, can I say that? Uh, she's very beautiful. So she had a fatal stroke and died. She was had a 1.3 million Twitter followers. Playboy model Katie Mae's fatal stroke followed neck pain from bad fall during photo shoot. But what I read about in the article just now is that she pinched a nerve in her neck and then she went to a chiropractor and she said, I got adjusted this morning. Then she died. This is not the first case, by the way, that I have seen of chiropractors killing patients in plain English. I, I know other story. I won't let anyone touch my neck. Ever. And I had that my whole life. People would say I'm crazy. They do wonders and they do. But I, I have a thing. I won't let anyone touch my neck. And I made the mistake three years ago of letting a masseuse. Another thing I don't like is I don't like massage at all. I hate it. I don't like people touching my body. If I don't, you know what I'm saying? I just can't explain it. It's just not part of my culture. I just don't go for it. I don't understand this whole spa thing where it's like very grease and the whole deal. It's like so it's supposed to be some big deal to lay there and let someone manipulate your muscles. So. I, I was against it, but there was a masseuse that went around in the, in the family, was massaging everyone, everyone liked her, and about three years ago, I was engaged in conversation with her on the table, the dog was barking at her, Teddy doesn't bark a lot, he didn't trust her, and he was giving her the bark, and she was very stern in her controlling, and she would say, you stop it, This I should have known right then and there. Well, she was talking to me, talking to me, talking to me, all of a sudden, I told her, never touch my neck. She did something to the right side of my neck that I've never been the same ever since. I, we never used her again. But the point I'm making is I don't let anyone touch my neck. So here's this model who had an adjustment. Bingo, dead. I have a friend who's a doctor. I've lost touch with him for many years now. He's a very fine doctor. His father died after visiting a chiropractor in the Midwest many, many years ago. I said, what do you mean? He said he adjusted him. He went out on a cold morning and died in the snow. So, you know, things stick in your mind. I don't know. My family's not into massage and, and, and adjustment. That's it. Back in a minute. We're talking about serious things. The average person could care less. They still care only about drug, sex, and rock and roll. Here, most popular on the Daily News, Playboy model Katie May dead at 34. Former LAPD cop claims Diddy had Tupac Shakur killed. Sarandon Morgan trades social media barbs over her breast. Can you believe that someone would care about that piece of fruit on the jungle floor? 
Jennifer Lopez looks completely different without makeup. This is the world you live in. This is how Hillary Clinton can get away with the lies. Natalie Portman's husband quits Paris Ballet amid tensions. You hear this? Celine Dion speaks publicly about late husband. Oh, number eight. Madoff didn't care about, uh, Bernie Madoff didn't care when his sons died, says Dreyfus. Dreyf, uh, Dreyfus, uh, can he measure up to De Niro in Madoff biopic? So that's what people care about, entertainment, sports. You look at the listenerships, the viewerships. It's always been the same, and nothing's going to change. And uh, so we're in a business here in talk radio that's quite different. But we can't forget the bigger world. And the bigger world is what I just told you it is. It can never be forgotten that's the bigger world. I can guarantee you more people know about Playboy model Katie Mays dying from a stroke <clears throat> than they know about the debates last night. And for good reason. I mean, who would want to watch Hillary Clinton when they could watch, they could be on Instagram with Katie May? Well, no, God rest his soul, I mean. So let's go back to Hillary Clinton since that's our stock and trade. After attacking Wall Street, her and the, the commie, in clip eight now she says she's going to rein in the pharmaceutical industry. Listen to clip number eight. This is we really great. We both want to rein in the excesses of Wall Street. I also want to rein in the excesses of companies like Johnson Controls that we bailed out when they were an auto parts company and we saved the auto industry and now they want to avoid paying taxes. I want to go after the pharmaceutical companies like Valiant and, and Turing right, you heard that are story, increasing... Right. The, witch, the witch of Warwick. Apparently Johnson Controls didn't kick up enough to the Clinton Library. That's the only reason she's picking them out. Why is she picking on them out of nowhere? Why doesn't she mention, mention Microsoft uh, avoiding taxes by using the double Dutch or triple Irish? Why doesn't she mention Facebook and their tax evasion using the same kind of accounting? What is she picking on Johnson Controls? And then she goes after, again, the same thing. Big oil, big pharmaceutical, companies you never heard of. Again, taxes, taxes, taxes. Hey, listen, I'd like to see all of these big companies pay their fair share. Maybe it'll reduce my burden. I'd like to see Jerry Brown stop attacking the rich in California and reducing state income tax so I can stay in the state instead of being driven out of the state so we can invite more freeloaders in from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras who pay almost no taxes on their money. That's what he ought to do is encourage people to stay here, encourage people to build businesses in California instead of driving businesses away. That's what I would call a, a sane tax reform is stop attacking the most productive elements of our society in order to appease those on the bottom. That's called demagoguery, my friends. And if you want to see how it works out, you have to look no further than South America and uh, Cuba. That's where it goes. WVLK, Jim. Oh, I can't get to that call. He could stay on for the third hour. It's a physician who says statistics show stroke risk increased by adjustments. See that? I have no one adjusts my neck. God gave me a good neck when I was born. Thank you very much. Just as God made a pair of shoes for my dog, and he never needs to buy a new pair, he gave me one neck, and I don't want a new neck, if you don't mind. You ever think about the miracle of that, that a dog gets one pair of shoes for his whole life and he doesn't complain about it? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think she is just not progressive. I do not know any progressive who has a super PAC and takes $15 million from Wall Street. That's just not progressive. No wire hangers! <laughs> What's wire hangers doing in this closet when I told you no wire hangers ever? All right, it's an in-joke. You have to know the show to understand why that's funny. But um, if, you, if you're a progressive, all you got to do is go to Venezuela and see how that's worked out. Powerline has an article, For Venezuela, the end is near someone tell Bernie. 
But they don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear any of this. They don't want to understand anything that's to do with reality. There's no toilet paper, but they don't care because it's progressive. The important thing is that their philosophy is enacted, not that the reality of their philosophy is enacted. That doesn't matter. President Maduro's socialist government, no strategy to deal with the impending catastrophe, which shapes up as one of the most appalling economic and fiscal collapses in world history, a dying economy, disorder, violence. Venezuela's capital, Caracas, now has the highest number of murders in the world. Why? Well, they need stricter gun control. Actually, no, because there is gun control. So Chavez and Maduro blaming uh, the wreckage of their economy on the North Americans or on wreckers and saboteurs, even as they destroyed their own economy, did no good whatsoever. And yet here in America, we have the same mentality as that of Chavez and Maduro, where Bernie Sanders rails against Wall Street. It's identical. Can someone please tell Bernie Sanders that socialism has been tried many times? Maybe once Rachel Maddow will read something other than a teleprompter. Maybe once Bernie Sanders will be called out for the fool that he actually is. Welcome to hour number three. It is open mic to mic rock and roll Friday. And we're talking about the Madoff thing on ABC because it has a deep impact today. Talking about the housing crisis. And someone wrote me this yesterday who knows about the financial crisis. He said the next crisis will be worse than 2008. Why? Because banks are 33% more leveraged. Worldwide debt has increased 57 trillion since 08. Thank you, Barack Obama. And the boys, Jamie Demon, Warren Buffett, Larry Fink, and the heads of Fidelity and other hedge funds secretly met the other day, according to the Financial Times article. Savage, you're absolutely right. It's going to happen again, and it's not going to be pretty. Now let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Joey's been holding from WABC on line six. Joey, what's on your mind? How are you? Bernie Madoff. Um, I see him every six, about every six months. I go visit somebody, and I really can't say, but I do go see somebody about every six months. And um, when we're in the lounge room, if you will, and uh, we're doing our visit, whatever, he's right there, like to the right of me, and he's just laughing it up with whom I was visiting him at the time. So he's having a good. T he's having a good time in prison. Well, that's what made me insane because he lost two kids. The wife is living it high, and this guy's in, in sitting there like. And I hear through the grapevine, if you will, Michael. I mean, you're from the Bronx. You know what I'm talking about. He plays cards in the back. He plays poker. Uh, they have bets. They cook. They eat. So. Uh, the so <laughs> so this is interesting. So is he? He is what is known as a sociopath. He has no conscience. That's what I, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, no, no, it's, let's analyze this. A guy like this, you think about it. He was riding high, limousine, penthouse, the best of everything. Uh, now he's living in prison, and nothing bothers him. He's laughing in prison, you're saying. So how would you describe, how could that be? You wouldn't be like that if you were in there, would you? I would be hanging myself. Your friend, your friend uh, is he enjoying himself in the prison? He's there till he dies. Oh, boy. So, no, so come on. You look at the guy and you ask about him. What explains it? Is it the lack of a conscience? What What do you think the answer is? He's got a black heart. He's got a black heart. That's all I could say. When I walked out of there, I was disgusted. And I'll be honest, very honest with you. He's, I was well, what do you, you mean he has no feelings? There's no, no feelings there? He's like dead inside? Well, if your two kids are dead, Michael, because of your hand, my, my God. You're, oh, I, I could, no, sorry. God forbid I couldn't live with myself. No, that's the worst curse you could ever do is have a person, a child commit suicide. How could you live with that? And he didn't do, do it because, not because of the father. He did it specifically because of Bernie Madoff. Exactly. So God help him. And the other one, the other one, you know what's interesting in the show last night? The one who got cancer, the sensitive one, he said something that I know happens to be true in the world of uh, psychosomatic medicine. It's 100% true. He says to his mother, he said, you know, Mom, he says, this cancer that I have, it's my cancer. It's the first thing I have that's mine that has nothing to do with my father. And he kept using the word my cancer, my cancer. I've studied this in great detail for many, many years, and many people don't know when they're sick. They should not overly identify with, quote, their illness and call it my this or my that because you, what you're doing is you're locking onto it and you're making it part of yourself when, in fact, it should be rejected from you, not accepted by you. But that, that's a whole show unto itself, which is the whole, psycho, the, the whole psychology of, of illness. And there's a huge component of mental 
a mental state and illness, incidentally. You know that as well. But let's get back to Bernie Madoff. Uh, 